chapter four, managing an escrow account. I think it's important to note that a real estate broker does not have to have an escrow account. And all an escrow account is, is a place of safekeeping. It's where we put, it's, it's a place where we put things for safekeeping for other people. If a broker chooses, however, to have an escrow account, they become responsible for wh whatever they put in and the amount that they put in. In other words, what goes in has to come out. And the question might be, what can we put in an escrow account? Well, first of all, we could put cash, checks, um, money orders. We could put in actually stocks, bonds. Any number of things can be held in escrow. As far as where we can hold these escrow accounts, they can be either in a commercial bank, a savings and loan, a title company, a credit union, or an attorney. And I'm going to separate those out in just a minute or two. Brokers also have the ability to place money in escrow, whether it's interest-bearing or non-interest. If a broker chooses to put money in an interest-bearing account, then the disposition of the interest is sub, it will be subject to the buyer and seller saying where that money can go. In other words, a broker can retain all of the interest coming from that account, provided that both the buyer and the seller know and agree to that circumstance. When a broker establishes an escrow account, Florida law allows a broker to place up to $1,000 into an account to open up a sales account. They will also allow the broker to put in up to $5,000 of their own personal money to open up a property management account, and that'll be up to the broker how they want to handle that. When it comes to taking earnest money deposits, now this is a critical part. When it comes to taking earnest money deposits, there's a word that we use is called immediate. When a sales associate writes an offer, typically speaking, a an earnest money deposit is going to be tendered with that offer. Anytime that a sales associate accepts money as part of the offer, it has to be delivered to the broker within one business day. The broker has to deliver that into escrow within three business days. Now, it's important for you to understand that the meter starts to run the same time in both situations. In other words, it's when that money was actually tendered. If the deposit is collected at a later date, it's whenever that money was actually collected is when the meter starts to run. So for sales associates, it's one business day. For brokers, it's three business days. Let me give an example. A sales associate accepts a, an earnest money deposit on a Thursday. It has to be delivered to the broker by Friday afternoon at the end of the business day. For the broker, it has to be in escrow Friday, Monday, by the end of the day on Tuesday afternoon. Now, weekends and federal holidays are excluded, uh, and there are no exceptions. I mentioned earlier that brokers were allowed to maintain money in either uh, credit unions, commercial banks, savings associations, but also title companies and attorneys. When they place money in a title company or with an attorney, there may not be an immediate receipt of deposit. The broker has 10 business days from the date that they make the deposit in a title company or with an attorney to request a receipt that the deposit has been made. Now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be made in that three business days. It does, but they've got 10 business days after deposit to ask for a receipt or a verification of deposit. Now, that may or may not be uh, provided, but at least we have to make that, that request. I also want you to understand that when we're taking deposits, we, there's all kinds that we can take. We can even take post-dated checks or even uh, promissory notes. Now, let me make a comment about post-dated checks. A post-dated check, first of all, is something that we don't like to do. But the only circumstance that I can think of that a post-dated check could be done is that if we take a deposit that is going to be due at a later date. The way the statute reads is that once we accept the deposit, that we are bound to turn it over, that we can't hold it. But if we have a post-dated check, that may give us that freedom to be able to hold it until, but keep in mind, if we take a post-dated check, the seller has to know and agree to that up front. We can also take promissory notes. One of the issues that's come up recently is that what if a sales associate gets a deposit, gets an earnest money deposit from a 
potential buyer, and they inadvertently make the check out to the sales associate, how can that be handled? Well, it's easy. You could either make them rewrite a new check, but there's a simpler way. All the sales associate has to do is to endorse that over to the broker. That's all that has to be done. Florida law does not allow conversion. In other words, we cannot convert somebody else's money to something else for another purpose. Also, we are not allowed to commingle escrow money into business accounts or any other account. I mentioned earlier, when we take deposits, what comes in has to go out. And it has to go out for a very specific reason. It can't just come and go uh, at will. Bookkeeping is going to be an important part of a broker's job if, in fact, they are the holders of escrow. Remember earlier I said that brokers don't have to hold escrow, that they can always turn it over to somebody else. If a broker is holding escrow, remember I said that they're putting it in a commercial bank, a savings and loan, or a credit union. Now, when, the, when we put it in those three accounts, the broker has the ability to write checks on it. In other words, the broker has control. And if we place money in those accounts, the broker has to be the signature on those accounts. If the broker decides to turn the money over to a title company or an attorney, the broker does not have signature power. Therefore, once it's turned over to a title company or an attorney, it's outside of the control of the broker. And that's going to come up again later on when we're talking about disputes and can a broker give back money uh, in a dispute or not and how that's supposed to be handled. But if a broker is holding trust, then every month that broker has to reconcile that trust account. In other words, the broker has to be the signature on that trust account. Trust liability. And this, this is an issue that comes up all the time. What is a broker's trust liability? Well, the fact of the matter is, let's simplify it, is simply the amount of the money that is supposed to be in that trust account. And that is to take into consideration any checks that have been written that have not cashed yet or any deposits that have come through that have not cleared yet. So trust, uh, the trust liability is the actual money that's supposed to be there and may not necessarily be the money that's actually there. The reconciliation process, once a broker reconciles his escrow account, if there's a negative report, uh, that needs to be taken care of because when the auditor comes in, if they find negatives in that report, uh, there's going to be a problem. Escrow disputes. Anytime that a buyer and seller are making demands on escrow or earnest money, that's called conflicting demands. Now, there are a couple of ways that a broker is required to give back deposits no matter what. One is statutorily, and that is to say that if a person has purchased a condominium or a cooperative, there is a certain rescission period, depending whether it's a new condo, a co-op, or one that's a resale. As long as that person makes the demand during that rescission period, the broker is required by statute to give back the deposit. Also, there's been some case law uh, regarding uh, if a buyer makes, a, uh, makes application for a loan as part of the contract and the loan is denied, uh, case law, district courts have said that the broker has to give back the deposit. But you need to have a paper trail. It needs to be verified that the loan was rejected. Otherwise, if there's conflicting demands, if the broker is holding escrow, that is, remember, in a commercial bank, credit union, uh, a savings and loan, They've got to notify the Florida Real Estate Commission within 15 business days of the last demand. And that they've got to get the whole problem resolved within 30 days of the last demand or take some type of action. Now, if the deposit or earnest money is being held by a title company or an attorney, the broker is not required uh, uh, to go through these procedures or to make these notifications. If they do make the notification, they've got some choices to make. Most of the contracts require mediation. And all mediation is is when we have a third party who's helping with the negotiations where they can uh, come to a meeting of the minds. There's arbitration. Now, arbitration typically is where a third party makes the decision for the buyer and seller. Oftentimes, the buyer and seller doesn't like, they don't like that 
uh, arbitration aspect. They can ask, the broker can ask that the Real Estate Commission is, issue an escrow disbursement order. In other words, we're going to ask the Real Estate Commission to, to tell us what to do. Who do we give the deposit to? And by the way, the escrow disbursement order is binding as is arbitration. Buyers and sellers can also litigate. In other words, they can take it to court. Um, there's another uh, aspect of disputes or conflicting demands that I think that is important for you to know, and that's good faith doubt. It's important to understand good faith doubt. Good faith doubt is, is a situation that has occurred where you don't have a dispute yet, but chances are there will be a dispute. Let me give you the best example of a good faith doubt. Uh, a buyer and seller has entered into an agreement. The contract is contingent on financing. After the date required for the financing to be obtained, the buyer says, I need an extension. I need to go beyond this to get my extension. The seller says, fine. Continues beyond that, say 30 days or whatever it might take. And then finds out that they can't get their loan and says, I want my money back. The extension was not in writing. The the broker is going to be pretty bound to giving back the buyer their deposit because the financing was not done. The problem is, is that because it went past the 15 business days without a written extension, that can be considered good faith doubt. So therefore, the broker is going to be required to notify the Florida Real Estate Commission within 15 business days after the, uh, the time frame or the time is of the essence to have the loan approved, notify the commission uh, that he has good faith doubt. Failure to do so is going to be a violation of, of Florida law. I think there's an important note to make that um, once a broker has notified the real estate commission of a dispute, that uh, if that dispute is resolved somehow, buyer and seller to come to an agreement, there's a 10-day notification period that has to be made to the Florida Real Estate Commission. Let them know that the dispute has been handled. That takes care of Chapter 4's review. What I'd like to do right now is go ahead and review with you the summary of Chapter 4. Brokers do not have to have an escrow account. If a broker holds a deposit, it must be placed in a bank, credit union, title company, or an attorney doing business in Florida. The account can be interest-bearing, and the broker can receive the interest if the buyer and seller agree. Immediate for brokers is three business days. Immediate for sales associates is one business day. Earnest money deposit made payable to an associate should be endorsed to the broker. Trust liability is the total sum of all funds that should be in the account regardless. Conflicting demands occur when both buyer and seller request the deposit. Good faith doubt occurs when there's a situation that could become conflicting demands. Conflicting demands and good faith doubt require 15 business day notice at the outset and 30 business days for resolution. The four settlement procedures, mediation, arbitration, litigation, and the Florida Real Estate Commission escrow disbursement order. A broker must notify the Florida Real Estate Commission within 10 days if the issue was resolved early. And that's the end of Chapter 4's summary.